an investor may be required to choose an investment among the available alternative investment options but to choose a particular investment it is desirable to evaluate the risk and return associated with each investment alternative now how to calculate this return and risk associated with the particular investment option an investment an investor needs to learn this risk return trade off competition how can we define a return on investment basically a return on investment is a change in the investor's wealth that results from holding an investment over a particular period of time that change in in, in the wealth occurs due to two reasons the first reason is the future cash flow in the form of dividend or interest and the second change is the price appreciation that may be in terms of negative or positive this means that the price of particular investment may be increased or decreased in the days to come so due to this change in the investment's principal price the wealth of the invest investor may change we have two types of returns the first is the historical returns these are the returns that an investor uh, have earned in the past or the investment has experienced in the past over a particular period of time the second types of return is the expected returns these are the returns that uh, that can be uh, Uh, that can be computed computed as a weighted average over the longer period of past returns experienced by a particular investment there emerged another concept that is holding period return holding period returns are the returns that are experienced by an investor holding a particular investment for a particular period of time in the past now how to measure historical uh, returns uh, in fact historical returns are the returns that can help in evaluating the expected risk and return trade off on a particular investment or multiple options available on alternative investments to measure historical returns we need to have ending value of investment and opening value of investment and the when we divide ending value of investment over its beginning value the resulting figure is basically the holding period return and if the holding period return is greater than 1 this means the returns are positive and that another means that the investment has created value for its owner on the other side if holding period returns are less than 1 this means that the return is negative and this another means that the investment has not created wealth for its owner we can transform holding period returns into percentage and then uh, we will be in fact computing holding period yield or hpy now to compute holding period yield we need to deduct one as a principal from the holding period return uh, if we have investment horizon over a multiple period of time then we can determine annualized holding period return to annualized holding period return we just use the power of number of periods for which the investment is hold we have an example in this regard which says that an investment costing 250 dollars 2 year earlier is worth 350 dollar now now to determine its holding period return we just divide the ending value of 350 over the opening value of 250 and the resulting holding period return is 1.40 now to annualize this 1.40 we have the power for 2 years and that is 1.1832 this is the annualized holding period return now if we want to determine the holding period yield of this value 
then to determine this annualized holding period yield we will be deducting one from this holding period return so if we deduct one from 1.183 the resulting value is 18.32 percent so the annualized holding period yield on this particular investment is 18.32 percent per annum similarly we have another example which says that an investment costing $1,000 two years earlier is worth $750 now. So when we determine holding period return, it comes to 0.75. And if we analyzed this holding period return, it comes to 0.866. Now, when we get the analyzed holding period yield, the resulting value is a negative 13.40. So this means in the first example our holding period return is greater than 1 so there is an increase in the wealth by 18.32 percent and in the second example our holding period return is less than 1 and the annualized holding period yield now says that we have lost our investment by 13.40 percent the other measure we have the mean historical returns are the realized return uh, remember an investment may get high return for a certain period of time and low return for a certain period of time uh, this means that there may be positive return for a particular time period and there may be negative return for a particular time period and the analyst needs to consider both of these returns in his or her financial analysis so we can determine mean returns using these all types of returns uh, this means that mean return is basically the past return of past rate of return experienced by an investment and it is expected that this return will be continue for an extended period of time in the future uh, mean return or the average returns are the best way to measure returns on a particular investment. We can compute historical returns for a single investment and as a portfolio investment both. To determine single investments mean historical return we can compute them using arithmetic mean and geometric mean. When we use arithmetic mean basically this is the sum of annual holding period yields which is divided by the number of years this means that we have total periods holding yields and we have a total period and when we divide the total holding period yield over n we get the arithmetic mean or the average holding period yield to determine the geometric mean basically it is the nth root of the product of the holding period returns for n years and then we deduct this value 1 from this value so this means that we have the product of all holding period returns to the nth root minus 1 for that purpose we have an example here we have a 3 years of time period and for year 1 we have beginning value of 100 and ending value of 115 ending value of year 1 is the opening value of year 2 similarly the ending value of year 2 is the opening value of year 3 using these opening and ending values we have for each year the holding period return using this holding period return and the year we get the holding period yield now we can use this holding period yield to determine arithmetic mean which is 5 percent here and when we use this holding period yield in our geometric means model we get a geometric mean return of 3.353 percent so we see that our arithmetic mean is 5 percent which is greater than the geometric mean of 3.35 percent in fact arithmetic mean is biased upward but for that purpose we assume that investment assets or investments longer period performance is purpose to measure that is our prime purpose let's see an example which says that a security that increases in price from fifty dollar to hundred dollars during year one and drops back to fifty dollar during year two then the annual holding period yield if we get 
for year one it is one and for year two it is minus 0 0.50 if we use these two values through in the arithmetic mean model we get an arithmetic mean or mean average of 25 percent this investment in fact brought no change in wealth and this means there is no return as in the year one we have a gain in the year two we have a loss so apparently there is no return but the arithmetic mean still is given a 25 percent rate of return but when we use these holding period yields in the geometric mean model we see that the resulting figure is zero this means that through the usage of geometric mean we feel there is no return this means that we are at break even so the answer of 0% rate of return this actually accurately measures the fact that there is no change in the owner's wealth through this investment after a period of 2 years geometric mean is considered as a superior tool over the arithmetic mean uh, in determining long period mean returns because geometric mean indicates a compounded rate of return using the uh, ending value of investment against its beginning value if we compare geometric mean with the arithmetic mean we see that if the rate of return remains same for all of the time periods held for the investment then the geometric mean is equal to the arithmetic mean and if the rate of return is varying over the time horizon of the investment then the geometric mean will be lesser than the arithmetic mean as we have seen in our earlier example where the geometric mean was 3.83 against the arithmetic mean of 1.5 percent uh, uh, this shows that the larger annual changes in the rate of returns of an investment which means that there is a greater volatility so the difference between the geometric mean and the arithmetic mean returns would also be uh, the varying amount now how to measure the historical means return for a portfolio of investment in fact mean returns of a portfolio are measured as the weighted average of the holding period yields for the individual investments in that particular portfolio and for that purpose we use the weights to determine averages and these weights are basically based on the market values of each investments that is the reason these returns are termed as value weighted mean rate of return in the example we have three types of investment a b and c we have number of shares of these investments we have share prices at the beginning of the investment period and we have ending prices of these investments for each num each share multiplying these individual share values with their investments each holding we get the total amount of market value at the beginning and at the ending period using these values we can determine the holding period return like we if we divide this 1.2 million over this 1 million the holding period return is 1.2 and using this holding period return we can determine the holding period yield now how to determine the market weights these will be based on these ending market values if we divide this 1.2 million over 21.9 million the resulting figure is 0.05 and if we divide this 16.5 million over this total investment portfolio of 21.9 million the resulting figure is 0.75 to determine the weighted holding period yield we multiply the individual investments holding period yield over its weight in the total basket the total weighted holding period yield is now 0.095 so to determine the portfolio's overall holding period return we divide the portfolio's total ending market value over its total beginning value the resulting holding period return is 1.09 percent and when we deduct one from this 1.09 percent to determine the holding period yield on this portfolio the resulting holding period yield is 
9.5 percent so this is the rate of return that this particular portfolio has earned on this portfolio